So you've walked away from Randy Grimjaw's Grisly Gifts. Right? Yeah. Okay. You keep walking. Fantastic. And there is a bend in the road. Cool. And you follow the bend in the road, and you see what appears to be a merchant's bazaar stall on the side of the road uh, in front of you. Okay, then. But didn't... Uh... Speak up, boy. <laughs> um, I think... I shall go closer to investigate it. You want to investigate it? Investigate it, yes. All uh, right. So um, you get closer, um, and you can see that the sign that has the name of the stall um, is a scrimshaw. And as you get closer, you recognize that the words on the sign say, Granny Grimjaw's Grisly Gifts. Fantastic. I'm going to stare at it for a moment, stare back down the road I just traveled, stare at it for another moment, and just keep doing that for a little while, and then continue walking. Okay. So do you walk past her shop again? No, I'm continuing continuing walking in the same direction as I originally was. Yeah, so she's in front of you. Mm-hmm. And you're walking towards her if you want to walk the same direction. Do you want to walk past her? Sure. Okay. So as you get closer, uh, you hear a cackle. You hear Sounds that, right? You hear her cackle, cackle, cackle. And she goes, <laughs> That is my favorite voice. That I, I think told I've ever heard. you. I told you I'd see you soon. Yes, you did. And it's quite good to see you again. Yes, yes, very good indeed, indeed. Come, take a look at Granny's grisly gifts. Eh, why not? Okay, so like I said, there's a lot of shamanistic. Um, items there. There's uh, shrunken heads on the side posts of them. Uh, there's about six of them there. Um, Fantastic. She has all sorts of various strange and occultic looking paraphernalia on, okay. on her wares. Um, what what do you want to take a look at exactly? Do you want to look at like the shrunken heads or some of the very oddly she's got lots of scrimshaw um, charms. Okay. Okay. Or would you like to look at take a look at the, like the dragon knuckle bones for the divination and scrying? That sounds pretty cool. Okay. So what do you what do you want to do? Just look. Okay. So like she, I do at a store. So she notices that the uh, the the dragon bone knuckle the dragon bone knuckles have caught your eye. She goes, "Hmm, you wish for a prediction, do you?" You want old granny to give you a fortune? Mm. Let me think about it. Of course, of course. Take all the time that you need. <laughs> uh, I, I, in real life, I cannot take keep a serious face with that. <laughs> also... I'm going to ponder that for a little while, Mm -hmm. and then I think I will continue on my journey. Okay, so you leave? Yeah. She says- I say, uh, have a good day. She says, yes, yes, yes. Run, run, run. I will see you soon. <laughs> this is just fantabulous. So you keep you keep walking down the road and you see 
um, that the road gets darkened with shadows because of the trees in the road. Um, at, at this point, it is actually nighttime. Huh. Fantastic. Uh, uh, the sun has finally come uh, set. And you're walking, and you're what right? Mm-hmm. About 60 feet in front of you, you see a bazaar type stall. Um, as you get closer, you notice that there is a scrimshaw sign above the stall. Here, I stop. Okay. I ask myself <clears throat> out loud, am I walking in circles? And then think about that for a moment. Decide that I'm not. And decide that I'm hallucinating and continue walking. Okay. So as you get closer, um, you see that there is... Um, a new creature um, manning the stall. Fantastic. And uh, it's it's no longer uh, the visage of Granny Grimjaw as she appeared to you last. Um, but instead it is a, a male wearing a turban and with a braided goatee smoking a hookah. Okay. I'm assuming the sign says the same thing. As yes. If, if. It says okay. Granny Grimjaw's Grizzly Gifts. Okay. I think I will continue walking. Okay. <laughs> so you keep walking. <laughs> And you hear footsteps behind you. I turn around. You don't see anything. Okay. Do you stop walking? Yes. As you turn around? The footsteps stop. This is creepy. I start walking backwards. You hear the footsteps again. I stop. They stop. I walk forwards. You hear the footsteps behind you. I turn around. Do you stop? No. So you're just walking forward as as looking back? Yeah. You don't see anything, but you still hear footsteps behind you. I stop. They stop. I continue on my way. Okay. The footsteps follow you. Sounds about what I was expecting. Um, You come to a tunnel in a hill that looks like it was carved by some sort of creature or team um, of men. There are wind support structures going through a almost perfectly symmetrical circle through this hill. Inside the, do you go through the tunnel? Um, Before I do so, I say, Finally, something new, mm-hmm. and then I enter the tunnel. Okay, because why not? As you walk into the tunnel, the footsteps stop. Fantastic. I turn around. Okay. Well, stopping walking. Mm-hmm. And look at the entrance of the tunnel. Okay. It's not there. You, all you see is miles and miles of darkness behind you. Turn back around, keep walking. Okay. Uh, you walk for about an hour through this tunnel, and then you see some lights up ahead. It has been perfectly dark through this tunnel. You've been relying solely on your dark vision to not go. <laughs> but now you're starting to see some lights up ahead. But unlike traditional torchlight or daylight, these lights are green. Cool. I like green lights. They're they're strange. Mm Mm-hmm. So, as you get closer, the lights grow brighter and brighter. I... And they finally reveal a bizarre-like stall (laughs) with a scrimshaw sign on the top. 
that says grinding grimjaws for sleep this. I guess I'll just go with the flow here. Okay. <laughs> so I go to the gift okay. shop place. Mm-hmm. Look around for a little while. What do you want to look at? I just look around. She has finger bones. She has frogman spears. She has shrunken heads, dragon bone knuckles for divination, uh, talismans, uh, weird components for uh, at strange spells. I like talismans. They're cool. So I look at the talismans. Okay. Um, she has three different varieties of tal- talismans. Okay. One of purple and black color, one of a green and white color, and one of a red and gold color. Cool. And I say of those two colors because it looks like the metal of these talismans, whatever they're made, whatever material they're made out of. Uh, almost has a very veiny, lifelike experience. And give me a perception check. I was actually just about to ask if I could do that. Or an investigation check, but whatever. Um, perception... That would be 20. You can see that each of the talismans, um, every couple of seconds, throb as if they have a pulse. That is so cool. Can I roll an investigation check to sure. try and figure out what they are? That would be 10. 10 flat? Yeah. Okay. Um, they appear to be talismans of three different binary colors that throb as if they have a pulse. Okay. I. Likes the color green. Okay. It reminds me of plants, mm-hmm. which plants are cool. Okay. Do you want to look at the person tending the stall? Sure. That sounds good. That sounds good. So you, you look at the, the merchant? Yes. Um, it is still the turban wearing man smoking a hookah, uh, bare chested except for a vest, with a braided goatee. But in the darkness, the green light from the torches reflect in his eyes, and you can actually see that the color of his eyes are gold. That's cool. Um, I'm going to ask him, so what exactly are you doing out here in the middle of nowhere? I am tending the shop of a dear friend of mine for her. Um, Is there something that you would like to purchase? Hmm. Not really. It's nice to look, though. Of course. It is always nice to look. They have a saying in the deserts where I live. That the visage of an oasis to a man traveling through the desert is almost as sustaining as the oasis itself. I like that. At this, I will wish the man tending the salt a good night and continue walking. Okay. <laughs> you continue walking down this tunnel. And you notice that there is uh, no end to this tunnel. You've been walking for the past six hours. Okay, I think I'm going to sit down. So you sit down? Take, maybe meditate for a little while. So, I think I'm going to meditate. Okay. And do that for four hours. Because elf stuff. Sure. Um, You're, give me a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom... Saving throw 
That probably won't do anything. Probably I, not. I completely. Okay. Wisdom. Twelve. Okay. Even though you are an elf, and even though you normally don't need to sleep, you end up dozing off. Fantastic. When you wake up, you are in front of a bizarre like stall. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a scrimshaw side above the stall that says, Granny Grimjaw's Grisly Gifts. Can I pick up the sign? You want to try to pick up the sign? Yes. Okay. You reach for the sign and Granny Grimjaw pulls out a uh, back scratcher that looks like it is the skeletal arm of a monkey and that's smacks creepy. your hand with it. That's, that's a really kind of creepy. Can, uh, I'm going to ask her, can I have one of those things? Mm, I have many things. Which of these things would you like? And yes, it is indeed. Granny Grimjaw behind the stall again. If you couldn't tell by Fantastic. the Fantastic. Um, I'm going to reply with the hand back scratcher thing. Oh, no, 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 no. This, this is from one of my good friends, Lawrence. Did he happen to be tending your uh, shop? No, Lawrence was my pet monkey. Oh. <gasps> I like this monkey. It's it's a strange monkey. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Lou, it's okay to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lou's crying. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I guess I will. You are going to have hell with this DM. I guess. Remember, this is his regular DM. Yeah. I, I, I guess I will pick up. Well, I will go look at the green talons things. Okay. She has like 20 of them. That's they're, about, they're about the size of a silver dollar. Okay. Or a gold piece, you know. Yeah. If we're going to the realm, um, but they're they're so they're roughly an inch in diameter, uh -huh. and they have that same veiny looking chain uh, around attached to them. Which is mm, yes. These are the, the talismans that you two want. The very powerful charms, you know. Not very cheap. Many man hours to make. Many man hours indeed. They're definitely pretty. Oh, yes. Granny, they were elves. Many man hours put into an item like this does not result in the ugly wares. <laughs> Is... Um, can I roll a perception check to see just if there's, like, anything outside of the shop thing? Sure. Seventeen. Uh, you find yourself in a dead end tunnel with the shop facing the dead end, which you are in. Um. There's a sign behind you against the wall that literally says "dead end." <laughs> I like that sign. Um. You should. It was custom built for you. <laughs> <laughs> you walk out the shop. There's a sign there, "dead end." 
Okay. Go back to the other side of the shop. Dead end. Um. Walk around the sign. Dead end. <laughs> <laughs> now, now this one has a skull and crossbones. Um. Do you want one of these talismans of great power that you could not seek but can only be found? It depends on how much they cost. Oh, one copper piece. Oh, then sure. (laughs) (laughs) I'll take 20. So do you, so she she hold out her hand expecting <clears throat> him. Okay, I give her copper. Okay, she snatches it. The entire bazaar disappears, Fantastic. and all that is left on the ground is a silver towel. Is that green and white talisman? Cool. I pick it up. Okay. As you pick it up, do you try to take it from one hand? and put it around your neck like the chain? Or do you try to like look at it and then put it into your other hand and, and look at it? I try to look at it and then put it in a bag for safekeeping. Okay, so you put your hand in the bag and you let go of the talisman and it doesn't fall into the bag. That's kind of creepy, but really cool. Um, I looked down at the bag. Okay. Realized the talisman didn't fall into the bag. Mm-hmm. Try to push it into the bag. Okay. Your hand is inside the bag now with the talisman. Yes. Uh, go with the talisman. And, and it doesn't go into the bag. Okay. It stays stuck to your hand. I put my hand like this. Give me a perception check. Um, I'm just gonna say 11. Give it to me with advantage. Okay. 18? Okay. What you notice is the, as you're holding it up with your palm down, well, you need to use descriptive words when you're gesticulating because this is a podcast, not a video. That's true. Um, I keep with, reading that. It's fine. You, you're you looking at it with your palm down, and it's sticking to your palm. You notice that where the veins on the talisman, like go to the edge of the talisman, there is now the same color veins growing into your flesh. And you see them start spider webbing and spreading up your arm. That's cool. And up to your chest. Which arm was it? That you, which hand was it that you picked it up? Left or right? Uh, left. Okay. Your left hand, the hairs stop like looking like hairs, and they start looking like vines. <laughs> and the fingers on your hand no longer look like fingers. They look like leaves. I like this. And as the the, the veins crawl up your arm towards your chest and reach your heart, your world becomes white. Fantastic. Um, So where we left off last week, um, pretty much everybody got uh, teleported magically, mysteriously to a white room, right? Yeah. So um, what do you guys want to do? Do you guys need a recap of your surroundings or? It's white, and we see each other. Yes, and you see that neither of you, like, you can look at someone else and say, oh, hey, he's wearing clothes, but that shirt is supposed to go underneath, like, a leather armor. I have armor. a very high perception. Yeah, very Would high. it help me to see anything else that we haven't already seen? Um, you never know. You know? Like, I'm not going to say, yeah, there's something there for you to give a perception check on, but if you want to make a perception check, make a perception check. Five plus nine. Five plus nine, so 14. 14. Um, you, you notice that, like, there's the, the room, like, you really don't see an end to it, but you get this very w- weird, vague feeling f- about, like, the distance of the horizon on the room. 
But that's so, in other words, the horizon is just not like in a room. There's walls. The walls. Yeah, this doesn't have walls that are, are perceivable. So it's not necessarily a room. It's just a really big space. That's for your own inference. Well, I'm going to introduce myself to everybody. Tell them, you know, my name's Alberin. You know, looks like we're all in this mess together. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those of you who are racists, Albron is a tiefling. Demon born. If that affects your judgment or anything. For those of you that don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just pointing it out there. I'm making ample opportunities, ample opportunities for role play. Ample opportunities. I like that. Ample opportunities. Yay, spoonerisms. Excuse my listexia. I'm Dane Brandaged. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I liked that. Spoonerisms are fun. What can I say? Yeah. Um, so you guys notice that, like, um, you're a druid, so you probably have, like, when you're walking about, you probably have, like, a leather armor or something. You know, whatever you'd be wearing again, uh, underneath that is visible and, and is there. But to everyone else's eye, like, it's like, oh, hey, there's, suppo- there's something missing from your outfit. Like, you're supposed to have armor over top of that. Like, it's basically, like... A guy walking around with a wife beater and then a uniform, but no flak jacket. So it's like, what? <laughs> um, if you guys want to, go ahead and give me perception checks. I'm pretty sure your passive perception is going to give this to you, so you don't have, have to bother rolling. Yeah, mine's nine. Your passive is 19? Nine. It's 10 plus nine. whatever that is. It's 10 plus so your 19. modifier. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So why do I even roll? It's for you. you roll, okay, so like the difference between passive and active perception checks, right? A passive perception check is if I'm rolling a stealth check, okay, it has to be higher than your passive perception. Okay. So it's for it's for it's for detecting. So a stealth check has to be above nineteen per, yes. to hide from me. Yes. Okay. I understand. Is this the the passive perception? Is that's where it's supposed to go. Yeah. So you're gonna do add ten. You're gonna put ten down there, and then plus. Are you trained in perception? Um. Yes. Okay. So then you're gonna add that number next to the bubble, to ten. Okay. So like. Your passive perception is fourteen. So just write fourteen. Just write fourteen. Okay. Cool. So what did everybody get for the perception checks? Do you need dice? Fifteen. I got it. 15, so you're going to add 4 to that roll, Aaron. Oh, okay, so 18. Whopping 10. 10? 15. Okay, well, it's a good thing the DC for this was 5. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> That's what I rolled. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you guys look down at your own arms, um, it's your left arm, you see that there is a weird gem that looks like it has been embedded into your forearm uh, where the tendons are, and it's about the size of a gold piece, which I'm implying is a gold piece size is like a half dollar, like a silver half dollar size. Um, it's about that big around. Um, it is embedded in your skin and is raised on the outside of your skin. So it comes up about like a couple centimeters out of your skin. Um, they, It is currently at this point um, not so much diamond in color, but like a very cloudy uh, zero fire gem stone, if we're using gemology terms, right? It's incredibly cloudy. It's not clear at all. There's, it, there seems to be, kind of, but it's not. Col- it's colorless. It's opaque, and it is in, straight up embedded in your your arms. Um, so just now, the left arm, just the left arm. Does it affect our hand movement at all? I mean, not really, and it's it's really weird because it looks as if your body has grown scar. It does. It's not a weeping wound. It looks like there is, is scar tissue surrounding this gem. Well, I play the guitar, and is it going to infect my guitar? Oh. I'm fingering. Have you tried playing your guitar in yet? Is it here with me? No. <laughs> <laughs> you want to worry about that one later? <laughs> You got abducted, well, bro. Well, that, that's got me really jacked because that was a very rare guitar. Oh, what else can you do to try to simulate that mo- movement that would give you a test? You know, 
holding my hands and doing my fingerings. Or yeah, I'm not even gonna make you roll. You feel fine. He has introduced himself as Albron. Yeah, I am going to introduce myself to him since he opened up. Okay, you want to win? Okay, so so are you role playing that or just stating it? Because you can you can say hi, my name is Roland, or you can say I introduce myself to him. I introduce myself to him. There we go. So your name's Roland, huh? Mm-hmm. What do you do? A druid. You're a druid, huh? You? I'm, hey, I'm a singer. I'm a bard. I entertain everybody. That's my job, you know. We could use some entertainment. Yeah, looking at our surroundings. <laughs> but, you know, they took my guitar, my guitar, and I don't, I don't know what I'm going to play with. What did you play the do? robot. <laughs> <laughs> While this is going on, I'm going to take the screwdriver attachment on my finger. Do I still have my screwdriver attachment on my finger? Yes. I'm going to try to pry this gem out of my arm. <sighs> Give me a check. Do you want to what do kind slide of check of, are we doing? I, it's going to be dexterity based. Sleight of hand sounds good. Whoop. That is going to be a 13. 13? Yeah. Uh, nothing happens. Okay. And by, and by nothing, I mean, like, it's... Like, granted, you're a Warforged, so you really don't have, like, skin. I, 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 that was my... It's like, but... It, it's, what, basically, what? <laughs> it's basically as someone riveted it to you. Like, a single... Like, the gem was a single rivet. And it was just, like, riveted in. It's like... Okay, that's that's not a spot weld. No, that's a that's a full on heated rivet. That's not going anywhere. Okay, I'm gonna keep poking at it while they're talking. Okay. So, did you guys shake hands when you introduced yourselves to each other? I would say no. Okay, so you were keeping your distance from each other. I would keep my distance, but I would still be nice enough to say hi. I'm rolling. And okay. Chat with let, me, let me know if you guys get within like five feet of each other. I would not be so How nice. How close we was were, I when I was We were meditating time. right yeah, he, he facing was meditating each other. I was giving you guys the benefit of the doubt by not being that close. Okay. okay. Because, I mean, depending on what whatever, like, meditation you're doing, it can be, like, practically sitting in each other's lap you're so close, or you could be, like, 300 feet away on different, you know, sides of the room. You know, I've been meaning to ask you, you know, because I've never heard of the Warforge before. You know, this is this is non-player. No, I know. Non-character. Character. This is out of character. Um, your Warforge is it like a humanoid robot android, or so is it, it is not a cyborg. If that's the question, cyborg is a human. Human cube. Yeah, that's, that's what the size. size. Yeah, that's exactly the size I was thinking. And it's like okay. right, right where the forearm muscles start to expand. Okay. So what a Warforged is, reference. is it is basically, like, if you, any of those science fiction movies that is robots taking over the world, like completely sentient robots, Yeah, that's what a Warforged is. Okay, so you you have that humanoid look, but it's robotic. Yes. Kind of like uh, the Terminators. More like the Andes from Blade Runner. Yes. Oh, okay. The fleshies, yeah, okay. No, the Andes. Oh. The androids. Mm. It's been so long since I've seen Blade Runner. Yeah, cyborgs mm. are like, Lou, we chop off your shoulder, that sucks, and then we give you a mechanical sh shoulder. Yeah. You'd oh. be a cyborg. That's a cybernetic implant. Android is a robot that is designed to look, feel, taste, touch, every conceivable sense, look like a human. But made out of metal. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Warforges are typically made of metal and wood variations, and yeah. Steampunkish. So, yeah. That, that's exactly what they are. They are from the plane of Eberron, which is the steampunk oh, okay. D&D plane. Which is, which is why it's one of my favorite worlds. Yeah. Eberron is amazing. Because steampunk is, is awesome. High five. Air five. Air five across the table. So... Getting turned, back to the game. I've we'll turned to you. Yes. You know, I've never seen your tap before. Where are you from? My creator's basement. I love how you're gesticulating for a podcast. Uh, yes, yes. I'm used to it. <laughs> you, you're different. So are you. Yes, I'm, I'm demon born. I'm called a tiefling. Interesting. My name is Alberin. What's yours? People call me Brick. 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 
Brick. Okay, nice to meet you, Brick. Same. And you, dear. Hello. We seem to be having quite a powwow here. I'm trying to just get a feel for who we've got here. And Suddenly, Tarasks. No, I'm joking. Keep going. I run into its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to get a feel for who we've got here. And I know. I'm just thinking can, around. I'm, I what we can try time. to do, because, you know, I don't know about y'all, but I was at a bar tavern entertaining people and then all of a sudden there was this creature that came in and next thing you know I'm here what kind of creature I'm not sure but I think it stole some of my soul but I when I killed it it gave it back demon borns have souls yes we do racist I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know one of the things I I guess you can say. But by the way, my name's Alvarin. I'm Kistara. Kistara, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You know, everybody looks down upon my people. You know, they they think we're evil, but we're not. I'm, I'm flesh and blood, just like you, or like him. Not like him, but. And I'm pointing over at the Warforge, by the way, <clears throat> for the people that can't see. You know, I'm just like you. You know, I'm flesh and blood. It's just my outer, my outer look is different than yours. You know, and I want people to stop hating my people. You know, I want you to just be comfortable as if I was just another one of you. So let me ask you this, Gustavo. Have you ever encountered a tiefling or a demon born before in your world? Like, do they exist there? No. No? no. So you're, you're seeing, like, the incarnation of all the religious statutes of your world being, like... This is that thing that they told me to run away from. Pretty much, yeah. Hence the, uh, they have souls. What? <laughs> well, I, I figured that. I understand, Miss Kastara, that, you know, you're probably like every one of us from a different world. You know, maybe y'all don't even... How know. do you know that? <laughs> well, because he's never seen that guy before. Yeah, but everyone else looks normal to him. Just through... And I don't think he's, like, traveled the entirety of his world. But the point I'm trying to get at, instead of having a DM interruption... Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you're going to go somewhere with that, then maybe I'd let it slide. I'm just trying to direct you. I'm just trying to get a feel. You know, I already see that Ms. Castera here is very uh, reticent of talking with me because here, I, the way I look like a demon... Mm. I may maybe on the outside I look like a demon, but I'm just a normal, a normal person inside. I just wish people would just, you know, come to accept that I am not a demon. I just look like one. I ain't that the truth. Okay, so we're all in a place that we've obviously never been before, and we're already Stand. arguing over race. Yep. To my character and to me, this seems pretty pointless, and we should be trying to figure out what to do together. Yes, and that's what I was trying to get her over that racial hump. Whether or not there's a racial hump, as for me, who's never seen you before either, there's more important things to work on. We can deal with the race later. All righty. <laughs> like, that's what I was trying to make. <laughs> first, first point. You mentioned about... A creature that came after you. How else did everybody else get here? Well, because you weren't, like, the creature didn't teleport you here, remember? No, I know. I'm just, yeah, I, I skipped over it a little bit, but. Okay, now, were you intending to do that, or did you give yes. him the full switch? Okay. I got brought here by a glowing tree. A glowing tree. Giant white whale. <laughs> <laughs> Jump. Freaking. Freaking out, just screaming giant white whale. <laughs> yeah. Over and over and over. And over and over and over again. And it, just... it, it, like, in terms of like size comparison to your ship, like it's probably like if your shit's a man of war class, um, it's probably five to, to six times larger than that. Like I said, giant white whale. Yeah, we're we're talking at least a quarter mile long whale. And Miss Castera, how'd you get here? All I remember is some weird contraption in the sky. 
So many different avenues to bring us here. Okay, how do they connect? Water, land, sea at least. We got an air. And a spirit. So With our powers combined, we can be Captain Planet. I was I was more gonna go with the um Heart. everything was fine until so, the Fire Nation attacked. I was thinking Captain the Game elements, Man, but the elements brought us here. This is this has gotta be elemental. So you know why don't we try to, you know, get together and take a path, you know, just start walking out and see if we can find because I don't see a wall anywhere. Do you see walls? Nope. I don't see any walls. So, for all I know, this could be a, a plane of nothingness. You know. All right. If you guys check in your pockets to like look for anything, um, your or your backpacks, you notice a that you don't have any of your backpacks. And B, you basically have the clothes on your back, and that's it. Okay. Our pockets so, are empty. Our pouches are completely empty. empty. There is like you have the clothes on your back. So we have cloth. So that is the resources you have is the clothes on your back. Cloth is an horrible resource. No, it's not. I'm just saying that's that's the only resource. Okay. Who wants to pick a direction? Mm -hmm. Yes. Go. Start walking in a single direction. Does anybody follow him? Yes. I do. How I closely do. do you follow? I'm probably going to stay near the back because I already know I'm kind of weak without any gear anyway. Okay. Um... um I'm going to um, get about, you know, about five, ten feet behind him, you know, walking, trying to see if I see anything. So you're five to ten feet? Yeah. Okay. Um, Hi, or well. Hi. Okay, you're fine. As we're walking, I'm going to be every so often, and by so often I mean 45 seconds to every minute. I'm going to look at the gem and poke it, see if okay. anything goes on. So what are you guys actively doing while you're walking in the singular direction? I'm looking. I'm yeah. I'm looking around. So you guys are actively looking around? See, yeah. Trying to see if, I, if something approaches, any kind of creature, uh, any kind of wall appears. While I'm not looking at the gem, I am also observing the area. Okay. Yeah. And I do follow as well. Do we know a rough direction we're going? This way. Yeah, how can we have direction? We don't have a reference I know, point. but it might be helpful for him. No, it doesn't matter. Okay. If I'm going to create a directionless relativistic room, I'm not going to, like, be... Say so like, we're going north. And... If there's no point. I'm going the direction I'm going. We're going north-south. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about west-east? Oh, we're doing that, too. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, so you guys are walking, um, and it's, it's actually... You're all walking together. So, um, how long to stop? Like, if I say nothing happens until you stop, how long are you guys willing to stop? Until how long are you guys willing to go? Well, I'm assuming you'd be willing to go on and on forever. I was gonna say I'm gonna walk for twelve hours. Okay, so you're so, walking. So when would you guys get tired? We're gonna stop you before that point. <laughs> you will try. <laughs> hey, Britt. You're right. Britt, hold up. No, 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 hold up. We, we, Let, we let's don't answer that yet. question. Let's answer that question. How long until you guys stop? Brick goes 12 hours. Okay, so Brick is willing to go for 12 hours. Uh, what about everybody I'd say else? about every two hours we stop and... Uh, so you want to stop at, You want to stop at two hours? What about you? That's a lot shorter than I would have said. Okay. I live out in the wilderness. I'm used to long walks. I would say eight to 10 hours. Okay, so the pansy metrosexual bard is the one you guys have trouble <laughs> dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the reason no, these <laughs> shoes are hurting my feet. Can we take a stop? Oh, I'm, I'm used Everybody to hates me. That's him. <laughs> He's talking from experience. Shen, get out of our fantasy role-playing game. Whew. What about you, Aaron? Mm, the reason I'd I, say what's your background probably... say? You're a city slicker. Yeah, so so maybe four hours. And I'd be very So you're more irritated. with him about every two hours. Yeah, yeah. And the, the only reason I'm doing that is that way we can get a better 
um, awareness of our surroundings. Because, you know, not only am I looking um, horizontally, I'm looking vertically, I'm looking down to the ground, trying to see I would, if... I would assume I would be doing the same with a passive perception of 19. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> but the point I'm trying to get I'd at be is... be picking I'm up most stuff, I would think. Trying to see if I see any scratches and marks and whatnot on the floor. Uh, the, like, it's, the floor seems textureless. Like, it's, it's not... The best way to describe it is... It feels like you're walking on a cloud. It feels like the floor is misty. It's got that like really strange, eth- yeah. It's got that very ethereal texture to it. But when you look at it, it looks like a a non grouted one gigantic piece of tile that goes on ad infinitum or ad nauseum. Okay, ad, ad infinitum. Yeah. So. So we take our first stop at two hours. So you guys take your stop at two hours. Now, give me a perception check for the first two hours. 19. 19. I rolled a one. <laughs> that would be a 28. 28? Okay. Hey, you rolled more than 10. Congratulations. Better than your passive. All right. Now, um, what was what was the high? What everybody? I know you got a one. You got a... Both of us got 19s. 19s? Okay. So those of you who got both 15, um, give me a survival check. Eighteen. Okay. Seventeen. Seventeen. And your guy is gonna get out of the white room faster than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So those of you who noti- who um, who notice, um, you notice that it's like you're walking, but like your it's like your internal like compass is saying you're going the wrong way, you're going the wrong way, and then it shuts up for a while, and then it starts telling you you're going the wrong way again. Um, and so that's what you guys like notice right off the bat with your perception scores. And then for the survival checks, um, you actually notice that you're walking in a circle. Like you think you're walking in a straight line, but you're not. You're walking so, in a complete, like a, a circle, a very tight circle. Like not because, so you know how, like there's this idea is that because one person's fir- foot is shorter than the other, if they walk, try to walk in a straight line without any reference points, they're gonna walk in a circle about every five miles. It doesn't feel like that at all. Feels like very tight circles. Yeah. So is the floor moving instead of us? So you said Can that we find out? Yeah. How? I don't know. So you were saying that we have the instinct that says we're going the wrong way, we're going the wrong way, then it stops. Mm-hmm. Then it starts back up. Yeah. I've got an idea, folks. You know, you know we're Louie yeah. interrupted. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. You do the thing that you hate when people do to you. It's true. I thought you were finished. I, I wasn't was talking. Bill was. <laughs> no, uh, what I was going to say was um, I would like to pitch the idea to go to that point, turn 90 degrees, and continue walking. What? So the point in which, like, keep walking to the point that I no longer have the feeling that I'm being told to turn around. Mm-hmm. Turn ninety degrees. Continue walking. But, okay, so you when you start doing that, like you feel like you're going the right direction for a while, and then you're not anymore, or you turn ninety degrees and you don't feel like you're going the right direction at all. Okay. Do you turn ninety degrees to the right or the left? Alternating. Yeah. It, it like, would... like if it feels like the right direction, I'm keeping going that way. If I turn and it doesn't feel like the right way, next time I'm going the next way. You're doing a crazy Ivan. Yes. Okay. All right, so I ask why the uh, robot decides to uh, change course randomly. Okay, so what are you, what are you asking? You're asking why the, ro- the robot? Yep, and I say it pretty much just like robot. that. Why is the robot, robot? <laughs> <laughs> why is the robot rotating? He's made of metal. But from any of our worlds, do we know he's a robot? Because I know well, from I my world, robots don't exist. Can, but... All I know is he's made of ore. Yeah. And trees. Yeah. But like I said, priority state, I don't worry about that right now. Yeah. <laughs> but she has a name. should we be calling him robot? He said his name was Brick. Yeah, his name is yeah. Brick. See? He says people call him Brick. <laughs> All right, so Brick, 
Why is why is Brick just randomly changing direction here? Anybody got a clue? Well, depends. Are you asking Brick or asking everybody else? Everybody. <laughs> I have no idea why he keeps changing directions, but why don't we try this? You know, anybody else have funny feeling? Yeah, I get a funny feeling we're not going in the right direction. I feel like we're going walking in circles. I get a funny feeling about being in a big white room. Yeah, I'm looking. For black, <laughs> I'm looking for black curtains at the station. No, neither of those things are here. I'm sorry. So, what do you guys? What are you guys wanting to do? Well, hey, why don't we try this? Hold up a second, Brick. Why don't we walk? Somebody walk about fifty paces and stop, and then we walk. Somebody walk fifty paces beyond that and stop, and see what how we look. Are we in a straight line, or are we walking in a circle? I'm game for that. Who okay. Goes first? I start walking. Okay. You get 50 paces and you stop. I stop. Okay. And I, I sit down and meditate and wait for you guys to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. So, I, I go next. So yeah. you're, are you walking 50 paces past him? Yeah. Okay. So where are you guys? Well, I'm still back at the start point. Okay. Brick, you want to walk past them 50 paces. Does it look like we're curving off? After we do this all in sequence, where do we end up? Can you paces. point it like on a piece of paper to sh kind of show us? Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I was going to okay. use the whiteboard. All right. Um, oh, that's very. It's okay. So here's what happens, right? <clears throat> Let's say that the center of the white space on this whiteboard, um, this is where, where uh, Albron is, right? So it looks as if. Um, when you walk 50 paces forward, you stop right about here. Okay. Um, and to here is, this whiteboard is a rectangle, and so he stopped at one of the short ends of the rectangle, in the very center. And Albron is in the very center of the whiteboard. When Kristana... Kistara. 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 Um, when Kistara walked 50 paces past him, she ends up here. Which is immediately to the left uh, center of the long side of the rectangle um and you walk 55 feet 55 feet you end up here okay which is off center um if we're using cardinal directions you're south southeast okay from my perspective when they walked they came to me and kept walking straight yes does this mean they're walking around and coming back in it, it basically, what it, it looks like is happening is when you guys are watching them walk, right? So you're watching this. Can you show yeah. us our path? Yeah. Basically, the path looks like this. Now, that's what the path looks like from the center. But for everybody who's walking past and looking back, it looks like a straight line. And for every, anybody who's like walking in front of you that's not in the center, it looks like they're walking in a straight line. And then... That you don't see them anymore. Do they get farther away the further they walk, even though they're walking around in a circle? They actually lose you lose sight of them because the direction that you are looking in is no longer in. They're no longer in your field of view. If he looks around, can he see them? Yes. Yeah. No. This so, is... like the last person on that in the circle, are they further away than let's say I am from where we started? Only because he said he walked further. So we're going out in a spiral. From the center. But it's a spiral. That means we keep getting further away. Yeah. Which means if we keep walking, eventually we are going to make it somewhere anyway. Almost looks like a Fibonacci sequence. Oh, I love that. So. so and, and don't get me wrong, right? Like, th I'm working in a two-dimensional space there with that. Figuratively speaking, this is what you guys are seeing. Right? You are seeing a person walking in front of you. That person does not veer off outside of your field of vision. You stop seeing them. And then they appear somewhere else. And then when you look around, you see them like somewhere else. Trippy. Right? So I want some of this drug. On, on the two dimensional <laughs> image, yes, it looks like you're walking okay. in, a, in a spiral. <clears throat> That's not the sense you're getting, though. Okay. 
Okay. Now, with everybody standing like this, where I'm located, would it help if I did another perception roll? I would can, I see? We can, I can only answer that question if you make a perception check. 18 plus 9. 18 plus 9, so a 27? Mm-hmm. Is um, that high enough? Yeah. And, <laughs> no, no, it's not. So, so here's what you get, right? Okay. You get this, because like, because you walked fifty feet and stopped, right? Yes. Um, you get this strange sensation that if you like, if you reached your hand out, you could touch a thing. But every time you try to do that, you don't touch a thing. So it's keeping something just out of reach. Kind of. Um, what did you roll for your perception check, Lou? Nineteen. Okay, nineteen total. Yeah. You see, um, Roland try to reach his arm out in front of him, and then his arm does this. And basically, so what that looks like is he's reaching his arm forward, and before it gets about six inches away from his chest, his arm shoots out immediately to the right. But from your from your perceivable conception, it's, straight out. it's straight out. The way your the body feels kinesthetically, it's straight in front of you. So I don't know that's actually happening. You have no idea. But he does. Because he's seeing it. Mm-hmm. Roland. Yo. Um, when you're reaching out, are you putting your arm to the side or straight ahead? Straight ahead. Because what I see is you're putting your arm to the side. And it starts going out, and then all of a sudden you throw your arm to the side. What's going on? You guys I, realize that you do not have to raise your voice to talk to each other. Why don't you? It's as if you're like at, sitting at a table. Try this, Roland. No matter how far away you guys get from each other. Roland, try this. Close your eyes and reach out. I do so. You hit a wall. Really? Mm-hmm. I'm touching a wall. Can I feel what the wall is made of or anything? Can it you feels give me like any the same texture as the floor. Do okay, I like hear this or conversation? Yeah. No, everybody Everybody's does. talking like okay. they're at a table. So... I am going to do the same thing. Close my eyes and hand out. Yeah, you touch which direction? Um, the way right. directly in front of you? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, you don't. You don't touch anything. Okay. Not directly in front of you. I try the same thing. Directly in front of you? Directly in front of me. Okay. No, neither do you. Okay. So, yeah, I, Roland, I don't feel anything. Don't open your eyes. Put your hand on that wall and walk sideways. Keep my hand on the wall. Keep your hand on the wall. Kristara and Would you, you've got Rick. a better point of view. Would you recommend me walk left or right? Go left. Done. So Kristara and Brick, roll me some insight checks. Fifteen. Seven and plus two, so nine. Okay, so uh, you realize that if you guys are indeed walking in a circle, if you put your hand up straight in front of you, you're never going to touch a wall because your front of you is always pointed away. He walked 50 feet in front of him and then stopped directly in front of the wall. So he was about to turn if he walked further, but because he stopped, he had that lucky so number. I'm going to rotate my arm. You feel a wall. <laughs> I'm going to punch the wall. Okay. <laughs> Now, do I know this as well or no? Yes. Yes. You both do. Okay, I do the same thing. <laughs> you, you punch a wall as well? Yes. No, I don't actually punch it. <laughs> what happens when I punch the wall? Nothing. Okay. Darn. You you, you punch the wall. Okay. Uh, while I'm watching him walking to the left, mm-hmm. from my perspective, do I stay going a straight line walking the wall? Yeah. Okay. Because you're using another sense other than your vision. Okay. Um. It's a lot easier to... I thought I'd ask. I don't know if the walls are... <laughs> no, no, they're... They seem pretty flush. All right. It's, okay. not, it's not a rectangle as it is on the whiteboard. It's... it's... Kastara, you... you move 25 feet to the left and you hit a corner. Let's put it that way. At that point, I let him know I don't know if we're there yet. Okay. Kastara, walk, holding your hand on the wall with your eyes closed... Walk to your left. And Brick, if, and don't punch the wall again. 
Keep your eyes closed, your hand on the wall, and walk to your left. Start walking backwards toward, uh, in the left direction. Sure. I do as well, but also while while muttering about how I'm listening to Demon Born and something must, I must have done something very, very wrong. Yeah. Yep. Being punished for your mistakes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Rogues be tripping. So as they're walking the walls. They find corners eventually. Uh, any doors? No. But that leaves one wall uninvestigated. Yes. So, are two of us in the corner of that wall, or one of us in the corner of that wall? To, um, these two are... No, you two, because you said you walked backwards. Yes. You two find the same corner. Find the same corner. Okay. Well, and, sorry, not you two. Uh, Kistara and Brick find the same corner. Are we in opposite corners? Corners adjacent on the okay, same so wall? So basically, if, if, if um, Aldron is in the center of the room... Uh-huh. You guys are on the same side, but opposite corners of a wall. Okay. So, point here, point here. But we don't know that. He's the only one that would know that. That's because he's trying, the only one that can see. That's why I'm trying to direct y'all to get a feel for this room that we're in. Because we're in a room. We're not in okay. just an empty space. Well, keep directing. So, keep walking to y'all's left. Brick, don't be so... Uh, hard-headed walk you can feel Kistera right next to you keep walking the oh that, that's actually a good point we were in the same corner you were in the same corner we were in the same corner um True. higher low. less than five feet away probably I don't care who said low. it higher low low tie okay so as you guys get close to each other a horrible searing pain uh, emanates from your forearm, mm. where the emblems are, on both of you guys. Um, it is debilitating, and you guys get flashes of images in your head, and then you both pass out. What are these images? Um, so for you, um, <clears throat> you get images of wolves and foxes and... Uh, like ravens and owls in the night. Okay. And for her, she must get some scary world to her. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, uh, um, let me see your character sheet. What do you think? What are you looking for? What do you think? Depends. What are you looking for? What's your feet? Oh, um... When you said depends, I it is the. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I've done that before too. <clears throat> My phone is in the vehicle, so yeah, it's fine. Alert! Alert! Feet! Alert! Okay, you you see a picture of a watchdog, like standing guard. Okay. And, and guardsmen. But we're unconscious. Yes. Yes, you see them fall over. They slump over. <clears throat> okay, Roland, don't move. Don't get any closer to them. My eyes are closed. I have no idea where they are. Yeah, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm just trusting I'm, you right now. <laughs> don't move uh, any further towards them. They got close, and all of a sudden, they just... You saw a purple light emanating from their forearms, and then they passed out. You're welcome for the color, by the way. Yeah, purple. Is that your favorite color? Yes, yes, it is. Cool. So I I pass, I impart that information. Tell you what, walk the other way, because we've got this other wall to try to get a map of, so to speak. And you walk the other way. I don't want to get sure. too close. I'll, I'll make sure to keep you away from them, but just walk, try and map this place. Okay. So you go the opposite direction? I go to the right now. Okay. You move 50 feet to the right before you come across another corner. I'm at another corner. Okay. Um, 
proceed onto that wall. Tell you what, why don't you not only just keep your hand on the wall, but move it up and down, see if maybe there's windows or buttons or something. You know, there's got to be a way out of this room. Okay. Other than just the old phrase, uh, look at the people, see what I saw, take the saw, uh, cut everything in half, two halves make a hole and crawl out. You come from a very world, weird world. Well, that's just a lot of um, language logic. I follow the wall. <clears throat> okay. And you're you're groping the wall to find any sort of like hidden anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give me a uh, perception check. Four plus nine. Thirteen. So thirteen. Okay. So you're you're groping the wall as you like are you know, closing your eyes to try to like follow this wall that you can't see. And then your hand comes across something that looks seems metallic. Doesn't look. I don't have. My Sorry, hands open. Uh, it feels metallic and it's cold to the touch. It has a similar feeling as metal. Um, and as soon as you touch it, the room goes dark. Completely, absolutely dark. Someone found the light switch. <laughs> well, I've got dark vision. Yeah. So do I. But if it's completely dark, I don't think that helps you a ton, does it? You dark. still need some sort of a light source no. coming in. No, for, with no. superior dark vision, you can see with absolute dark darkness. In you can see absolute darkness as if it was dim light, up okay. to 120 feet. With regular dark vision, you can see absolute darkness within 60 feet, uh, as, as if it were dim light. Like you basically see the world in black and white. Okay. I would assume that you would naturally just open your eyes when the when it goes dark. I wouldn't know. But well, when you, you, you touched know. a thing, so I imagine that you would look at the thing, or try to look at the thing that you were touching. It basically, it felt like um, there was a, a, a ring of some sort. or like a So circle. far, keeping my eyes closed is giving us a chance to learn about the place. Uh -huh. right. Therefore, I would assume I would have enough self-control to just say, I feel something if you, metal. If you're telling me you don't want to open your eyes, it's fine. It doesn't matter. It's, I have that's your choice. Curious. Yeah, no, that's fine. You and can... as far as I know, keeping my eyes closed is helping us. Yeah. So I would assume I would stay with them closed. Yeah. So the the ring looks, or not looks, it feels um, metallic, and there's almost like a knob or a button, like feeling texture. Like there's a there's a, a a node or like some sort of like thing coming out of the ring at the top. The ring is not free floating like a knocker for a door. But aside from that, it feels just the same as a knocker for a door. Okay. Like with a, a like the the freestanding ring, and then at the top of that ring, there's something to to hinge it off of. Mm -hmm. But there's it's not free flowing or free moving. So do you try to manipulate it at all? I explain it to you. See if you can manipulate it. Move it, twist it, push it, pull it, pop it. Okay. All right, so how are you trying to manipulate this object? I would assume I would start by trying to push it. Okay. Um, it gives resistance and it doesn't feel like you're going anywhere. Then I would probably try to turn it. Which direction? Probably turn to the left first. Turn to the left first? Okay. Because that's loosened. Um, it gives you resistance and it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. Then I would try the other direction. Okay. It uh, is giving you resistance and it doesn't look like it's going to give anywhere. <laughs> Try to pull it. Okay. Um, it is giving resistance, and it doesn't seem like it's going to go anywhere. Doesn't do anything. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, bop it. <laughs> Did you shake it yet? <laughs> <laughs> Flick it. Spin it. Take. Leave your hand on it and take your other hand off the wall. Okay. It doesn't. It, it's not like the um, creating a circuit. No. Okay. It's just, I'm just trying to come up with different ideas. Um, That's a good idea, but again, the knowledge of your do you know how specific you know about circuits? Yeah, do you know how specific of a bastard I'd have to be to make that the conclusion? Because across <laughs> any of our worlds, well, we wouldn't know about <laughs> circuits. No, I know. I'm just, 
I was using uh, player knowledge. I'm sorry. I was <laughs> cheating. <laughs> meta game. Well done, Lou. Oldest player here. Most experience here. First one to meta game. Yep. Cheater. <coughs> cheater, cheater, cheater. Um, keep your hand on the wall. Take your other hand off of it. Maybe. Will you have your eyes closed when you're talking? Are you, am I to assume that you are keeping your eyes closed while this is happening? No, I'm, I'm watching. His him. eyes have always been open. Okay. My just, eyes are closed. I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, to myself, yeah, as a player, not the character. Yeah. Uh, your dark vision does not extend to the wall. I'm within 50 feet of him. I know. You cannot see him. Can he see anything? No. There's your key. If we can't see anything, then it's not dark stopping you from seeing. So the way dark vision works is you can see in non-magical darkness, specifically. So, if, Which is funny because it doesn't say anything about magical light. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, if you were like a normal person and someone was casting magical light, wouldn't you be able to like not see the magical light? It'd be something that you couldn't see. It's magic. I ask if I can open my eyes and look at it. Uh, you ask who? Me? Him. Yeah. Go okay. ahead. See see what happens. You can't see the hand in front of your face. So I can't see anything either. This is magical darkness. It's got to be. Okay. Um, give me a what higher low. Those, those, those of you who are flame. Those of you who are unconscious, give me a, a higher low. Low. No. Both of you. Yeah. Sure. All right. Seventy-seven. Okay, not conscious still. What do you, you want to do? Can I cast Produce Flame? You sure can. Okay, I create a flame in my hand. Okay, you it's can't see the flame to... in your hand. So I create a light source and I can't even see the light source. Yeah. I inform him of that. <laughs> <laughs> I am holding a ball of fire in my hand and we cannot see it. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't tell it either. Some so is... it's not helping us either. Yeah. Um, just thought. <laughs> take your hand. Leave your hand on the wall. Take your hand. Did you take your? Did he take his hand off the switch to do produce, produce fame? flame? Oh, it's a cantrip. Question. Like I'm not going to be an asshole about it. I hold one hand and I created in the other. I mean, well, and since what, I can't see it, I put it out. Like who's who's not going to produce flame like this? Yeah. Or really? or like this. <laughs> like who's who's not like who's just gonna be like for those of you that are not watching this the podcast, it's snap thumbs up fire. Yeah. Yeah. Using your thumb as a cigarette lighter. Mm-hmm. So his hand is still on the Well yeah, I left one hand on, created produce flame in the other. Can't see the flame, so obviously it's not helping I put it out. Okay. Are you sure you put it out? Yeah, he yes. Out. Yeah, because it's his own magic. Like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm magic. sorry, it was a I bad would, joke. Yeah. I would assume um, I put it out. Nate, put your hand on the wall and take it off the, the switch thing. Done. Don't, don't, don't help. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking this was going to be easy. 